It is week four of our SPL Draft League, and this week we're matching up against the Philadelphia Stunkies, coached by none other than the Dude Shuckle. He's a commissioner of the league, he's a fantastic player, and first we're going to take a look at the matchup, I'll give you some thoughts on the team, and then we'll go in a little more in-depth on the team that I'm bringing before we get into the battle. So, to start things off, my dude has a pretty threatening team with a few different Pokemon. So, he has the Greninja, Baxcalibur, and Blood Moon. His top three are extremely scary. Now, other than that, he has... A pretty cool dynamic to be able to run with a, uh, a rain team. So, listen, he has the Pelipper to set up the rain. He has the Ludicolo for the swift swim. He has the Kilowattle to fire off crazy hurricanes and be very fast. Uh, and in general, I'm very afraid of rain, to be honest. It kind of puts me on my heels a little bit. I imagine they might be working with some rain. They also have the opportunity to go with something like Trick Room. You know, with the Bronzong and Hatterene. Along with Blood Moon, that thing can be very scary under Trick Room. Um, as always, of course, that thing has the potential to set up the Calm Minds with the Blood Moon, uh, as well as Baxcalibur setup. And uh, in general, very interesting team with a couple different uh, dynamics this thing could be working with. And let's take a little bit of a look at uh, in-depth look at the team that I'm bringing. First and foremost, we of course have my largest threat, and that is going to be the Focus Sash Furret. So. The reason why I decided to bring Furt this week is we have a little bit of an interesting dynamic and this thing can, it can put in some work against his team. I plan to lead off with this thing, so it's running the Focus Sash. Now, first of all, it's going to be able to frisk any item that uh, my opponent's going to go ahead and lead with. I can then choose to knock off, I can tidy up against a Glamora lead, but more importantly, I can go for an Endeavor, knocking myself down to 1 HP with the Focus Sash after they touch me. Uh, an Endeavor is going to knock any one of their Pokemon to 1 HP. They do not have a Ghost type which is going to then open up the door for a quick attack and easily be able to kind of put ourselves in a position where uh, we can grab an easy kill. But also it's nice to just be able to scout a lead uh, with the with the item there, potentially get some knockoffs. And if this Furret can work, it, it should be able to get a nice little Endeavor quick attack uh, cheese going. So we're working with the Dust Buster here. Now the second Mon on the team is going to be the Superior. Now this is a little bit of a different Superior than I would normally be working with where we have full Special Defensive Bulk. Now the reason for that is because they have huge threats like the Ludicolo, uh, the Greninja, the Blood Moon. Anything hitting us on the special side is not going to be able to do much. With the special defense investment along with an assault vest, uh, I can either go for a Leaf Storm, and you know, once I get myself 2 plus 2 after the Contrary boost, I can basically knock anything out. But I also am working with the Mirror Coat. Now, the reason for that, the reason for that is if I find myself in a situation against the Ursaluna Blood Moon, I know that. Um, I have trained myself up to be able to take uh, a max invested Blood Moon and then be able to finish it off with a Mirror Coat. So this thing is here to catch special attackers off guard. It works great against the Kilowattrel, great against the Ludicolo, great against the Ursa Luna, great against Greninja. And in general, this thing should be kind of an interesting catch em off guard bulky superior set. Um, next up, we are of course working with the Darkrai. So Darkrai to 216 speed investment is going to be faster than their team. and um, I'm working with Hypnosis and Nasty Plot here. If I can be able to set this Darkrai up, it can actually go crazy. And you'll also notice I'm working with the Blunder Policy. The reason for that is because it, of course, pairs well uh, with the 60% accurate Hypnosis. And that is going to, upon missing a Hypnosis, I would actually get myself um, my speed doubled. Now, the reason why that's important is I imagine one of his counters to Darkrai is going to be Choice Scarf Mian Shao. So. Um, if I'm able to miss a Hypnosis or even a Focus Blast before that thing comes in, I'll be faster than it, um, you know, and then I can just actually do some huge damage. So, that's the plan with the Darkrai, get myself fast, potentially put some stuff to sleep, start to Nasty Plot, and just do some Darkrai shit. Uh, next up, we of course are going to be working with the Galarian Slowking. This thing looks pretty decent into this matchup here. Um, one of the big things that does threaten me is going to be you know, taking dark attacks from things like that Greninja. So I'm actually working with the Cobra Berry here to be able to guarantee, you know, that I can take a Dark Pulse from Greninja. I can then Thunder Wave it in return, um, and in general, this thing should be able to uh, to live. To live, it has max HP. It's got defense investment, uh, a little bit of special attack here. Sludge Bomb hurts some stuff, and I also have Chili Reception to be able to, you know, not only get a pivot but also set up the snow. Now the reason why the snow could come in handy here, even without bringing Bear Tick is that I am also working with this Jolteon. So, Jolteon is going to be a Throat Spray Calm Mind set here, right? So, Alluring Voice looks pretty nice into, into a lot of Pokemon there. It also is going to activate that Throat Spray and give me that plus one special attack boost. Uh, but I'm also working with the Weather Ball. Now, the reason for that is because um, if I have the Snow Up or the Rain, I, regardless, Jolteon then has a super effective hit against 
um, the Ursaluna Blood Moon, which is something I'm very afraid of. So whether it's in the rain from their Pelipper or the snow from my Chili Reception, Weather Ball, one hit KOs Blood Moon Ursaluna, even without a Throat Spray. So that's the plan with this thing, um, a Calm Mindset. It, it's very fast, of course, Jolteon, like the fastest Diamond. And this thing has uh, a lot of ability to put some pressure. Now, the final Pokemon is going to be the Hitmontop. This is going to be Intimidate Hitmontop because, of course, Backscalibur is a huge threat. And this thing switches in very nicely to that. Uh, to the point where um, I, I kind of found myself building this with a red card. Now, the reason for that is because if they start to set up against the Hitmontop, they're going to have to touch me regardless. And after an Intimidate, it's very likely that they're not going to be able to... Uh, uh, to be able to knock me out, if it's then going to be able to kind of stir them out with the red card. I can click counter uh, against any physical attack and do huge damage to uh, whatever ends up getting dragged in. And again, they don't have a ghost type, so anything's going to be able to take a counter. And uh, this thing is here to potentially bulk up. Um, I have Mach Punch for priority. Yeah, and in general, this is going to be my Backscalibur stopper. So with that, this is my final team. And uh, let's go ahead and get into the game. Alright boys, it is game time and we get a first look at the team here. So, first things that I do notice is that they are not working with any sort of rain. So they don't have the Pelipper, there's no Kilowattril, no Ludicolo, and that is, while it's, it feels kind of good for me, it's also kind of throws a wrench in my plans. Because obviously I prep pretty heavily for the rain, where it looks like they're working with more of like a Trick Room type of variant with the Bronzong. They have the Hatterene, uh, and the two big threats with the Backscalibur and the Blood Moon. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and jump into the match and see how it's gonna go. So listen, I'm gonna stick with my Furret plan. I feel like still, you know, there's no ghost type available. I'm just gonna go with the Furret and just see what this thing can get going. As it turns out they lead off with the Bronzong, I actually frisk uh, the Custap Berry. So that tells me this thing is pretty much here to, uh, you know, get itself into low HP and then be able to move first while it ordinarily couldn't and then do something like explode is what I'm thinking. So I decided to just go for the knockoff I figure, you know, I can get some pretty decent damage. I actually end up getting a critical hit, and we get rid of that Custap Berry. So that's not horrible, as they take the turn one to set up the Stealth Rock. So, you know, Furret is here to tidy some shit up. This place looks like a damn dump, and I am not going to be having Stealth Rocks on my watch. So, um, at this point, you know, I, I can go for the tidy up. I can go for another knockoff. I figure, you know, Furret is probably not going to be able to do is Endeavor Quick Attack thing, and at this point, I'm just gonna go for that tidy up, get myself to uh, that plus one attack and speed, and honestly, the Furret is a threat out here. I bust out the broom, and we're ready to start sweeping. Gonna sweep the entire team with Furret, 100% chance. Uh, so I tidy it up, I obviously get that attack, and the speed boost here, and with the Focus Sash, I know that of course I can live uh, a body press or whatever this thing wants to go for. It turns out, it's gonna go for that Gyro Ball, I actually just raw dog the live there, which is kind of great. And at this point, I'm like, okay, at plus one, even without an item, I can go for that knockoff and it should finish off uh, the Bronzong here, which is actually great because then I'm faster than everything to where I can go for an Endeavor and knock them down to really low HP. But it turns out they're actually going to go for the Terra Steel here. Uh, this thing being the, the Terra Captain, uh, the Steel is basically just going to lose its Psychic Typing, which does allow it to live this knockoff, which... It's actually wildly unfortunate, it does live there, then fires off the Steel Beam. So, the Steel Beam is going to finish me off, but it's also going to take them out. The Steel Beam was probably there uh, for, you know, the Custap Berry to get a little little last two raw. But it takes out the Bronzong. I essentially, I trade for it for the Bronzong. Um, I didn't allow them to get the Stealth Rock up, which is fine. But in general, the Furret doesn't really do what I need it to do. Now, at this point, we have an interesting little selection here. Because we have an empty battlefield, and I figure... You know, I'm going to end up going into the Galarian Sloking. The reason for that is because if anything weird happens, I can go ahead and Chili Reception for a, a pivot here. But in general, the Gloking does look pretty decent against their team. So they decide to go into the Hatterene. Now, the Waifu over here doesn't have the greatest matchup. It can obviously hit me pretty hard with a Psychic, but I do threaten it in return with the Sludge Bomb. So I'm just going to stay in, go directly for that Sludge Bomb. It's actually kind of hilarious because it's like the only damn Pokemon that Galarian Sloking is going to be faster than with like one point. But uh, I go for that Sludge Bomb there. I end up getting the Poison while it does a nice little chunk. This allows them to go for the Light Screen. So at this point, I'm in kind of a weird spot to where, you know, I get the Poison there and I figure, you know, another Sludge Bomb takes this thing out. I can go for 
Uh, a chilly reception to try to maybe catch a switch. I figure they're probably just gonna set up the dual screens. Uh, but at this point, I'm gonna end up going for that chilly reception to try to see if they wanna switch out here. Nothing really wants to come in on the Galarian Slowking, but I go for that chilly reception just to switch here anyway, as I know, you know, the Hatterene doesn't really threaten much of my team regardless. Now, I'm not super worried about the screens because what I have in store for the sweepers should kind of bypass anyway with like the, you, you'll see. So. I decided to go into, on the free switch, I'm gonna go into Superior. I'm thinking, you know, I can actually, I can bring this thing in um, and I can freely get myself at plus two with a Leaf Storm. So obviously this thing is built a little bit differently in terms of how Superiors go, but they do get up the secondary screen there. And at this point, um, I just decided to go for that Leaf Storm to immediately get myself to the Superior at plus two. Now, should I have gone into something else other than Superior? Likely, because um, now I'm realizing that kind of opens the door for Backscalibur to come in, and it's behind screens, but I'm not necessarily super worried about the Backscalibur at this point. So they're going to go into this thing here, um, and behind the dual screens, yeah, it's going to have an easy time even at plus two. Uh, I, can't, I can't really touch this thing, and I decide to go into kind of my easy answer into Backscalibur. Now, of course, I know this thing wants to set up on me. I'm kind of thinking, you know, it's either Dragon Dance or... Um, the, the, the sword stance here. I'm gonna end up going into the Beyblade. I can immediately get an Intimidate and start to pressure this thing. Turns out they're actually working with the clear amulet to block the Intimidate here. And that is wildly unfortunate because now this thing freely gets up a Dragon Dance, sets itself up to plus one where it would be neutral. Um, but at this point I'm thinking, okay, it's fine. At plus one, I feel like they probably, you know, are confident in the damage that they're able to do with like a Glaive Rush. So I can go for the counter here and this hitmon top is built to be able to take an attack from this thing and then counter kill whatever comes in. Stop it from setting up with my red card. But they actually just end up going for a second dragon dance as there is pretty much no reason to. Now at this point I'm feeling like okay, even at plus two, they go for an attack here and you know while they may knock me out, I have the red card to force this thing out and then stop a switch. You may be thinking that is not how the red card works, but you may not know how I work. I'm not even gonna lie to you, at, the, at this point in the match, in the heat of the moment, I kind of figured that even they touch me and the red card activates and they get switched out and I don't have to worry about being set up on by the Backscalibur, but now, um, yeah, I do definitely realize that, uh, yeah, they, they kill me with the Glaive Rush at plus two. Uh, they are then faster than my entire team and red card is certainly no good for me here. So um, at this point, I just go for a mock Punch. The funniest part is me setting up the snow actually gives this thing a defense boost even further uh, with the Reflect Up, but I go for the mock Punch just basically for the laws at this point because a Glaive Rush does take me out and a red card is entirely useless if they do, in fact, knock you out in one hit. So, uh, at this point, it's fine. I have, I have a plan. I'm not going to get swept by this Backscalibur. Uh, it's, it's truly not an option. And that would be what I would say if I actually did have a plan. My, it turns out, yeah, uh, the Backscalibur is now faster and uh, than everything I have. And obviously, at plus two is going to kill literally my entire team. So that is going to be the end of the game. I do, in fact, get swept by this Backscalibur. And I'm not even going to lie to you, that feels horrible. I definitely misplayed um, two separate times there. I should have gone into something like Jolteon against the Hatterene and started to set up a Calm Mind. I could then, you know, threaten with a Luring Voice against a Backscalibur. Um, but in general... Yeah, I just, I, I just did that wrong. And I am absolutely, absolutely horrible at draft. Um, and at this point, yeah, it's kind of a lost cause. And I'm just, I'll just try to have fun through, through the rest of it. But yeah, I, I do get fully swept by this Backscalibur uh, behind screens. I'm not even going to lie. Uh, the Hitmon top plan absolutely did not work. And that's going to be the end of it. So thank you guys very much for watching. I will try to, at some point, get a win in this. Uh, I probably will not, as everybody else here is way better than me. But it is what it is. Thank you for watching. Definitely check out Shuckle's channel. They set themselves up uh, for an extremely easy and nice win here. Um, it, I got to admit, it does feel bad. I, I put so much prep in a ton of mock battles uh, against this team, and that could not have gone, truly could not have gone worse in any, any uh, essence of the word. So, yeah, thank you. I'll see you later.